Hello subscribers and watchers, what's up? This is Vivs from SlideNerd here. In this video, I'm going to show you guys how Backstack works in Android Fragments. So I have an app running over here, as you guys notice. I see add A, remove A, add B, remove B, replace with A, remove A, and stuff like this. So each of these transactions are causing some changes to the screen that we have, right? But now if you press the back button, it considers nothing about all those minute changes that were taking place inside your app. The user probably expects you to go back on each of those individual transactions rather than going back to the home screen when you press the back button. And this is the reason why we have to configure the Android back stack so that the different fragments and their intermediate changes are saved so that the user gets a better experience on his end, right? So now let's see how that can be done. So going back to our code here in Android Studio, if you go to my activity underscore main.xml, I have nothing great here, just buttons out there everywhere. So there's a button that says replace with A, there's a button that says replace with B, add, remove, detach, attach, blah blah blah, there's a lot of buttons over here, right? And then at the bottom of the stuff, I have a linear layout which is just there. Now if you notice carefully on the screen, this linear layout which I have is horizontal in nature. Um, I have not given it its horizontal, but by default linear layouts are horizontal, right? And inside that horizontal linear layout, what I have is this red colored area or whatever you call it and a light blue colored area. Now that is one linear layout with a weight of one and another scroll view with a weight of one, right? They are divided equally to take weights of one, one each. Because this is a horizontal linear layout, when you divide stuff, they are going to be divided horizontally, right? And then this linear layout has an ID called group inside which all the transactions or you can say the fragments appear and disappear. And this is the place where you can play with the fragments. And this on the right hand side is nothing but a plain scroll view which has a text view. Now the reason I have put this text view and the scroll view is everything because as changes happen here on the left side, I'm going to write them out to the text view here on the right side which means if I see add A here you're gonna see that the contents of the fragment backstack are currently at A then I say remove A then it will again say the contents are at A and remove A so that kind of dynamic interaction is something which I plan to show you guys exactly how the backstack works so if you guys noticed for each of the button that I have here I have a on click attribute and yeah by the way if you guys haven't seen my previous video about fragment transactions, please go back and check them out because this video is completely dependent on your understanding of fragments and their transactions. So, so now there's a on-click attribute that says replace with A. This one has an on-click attribute that says replace with B, add A, remove A and so on. So each of these buttons are calling a certain method. Now at the bottom you probably notice there's a back button here. Now this is my programmatic back button which means I click on this back it's gonna do the same thing which this back does over here. So how will I do that? Using the method manager dot pop backstack, and then there's the pop add b. Now this this button is solely just for demonstrative purposes because I put this button to show you guys how to pop a specific entry out of the backstack. Like for example, if we add a, remove a, then we add b and remove b. What I wanna do is pop add b so that is the scenario which I'm gonna talk about so let's go to our main activity and try to take a look at what's going on I got the fragment manager reference here I get the reference as usual right then for each of those methods that we have like add a remove a add b I've written created the transaction added the appropriate entry into the group that you see remember r.id.group which is nothing but this linear layout here which has the id group right so that the fragments appear over here and then you go to main activity there's the second thing is the object we have the third is the entry or tag that i give i have given for it and so on and so forth so this is the complete scenario right now there's nothing great other than that i'll remove this code okay now i need to save the state of each of these entries because right now when you press the back button like you saw it directly jumps to the home screen the android app doesn't know that <laughs> these transactions are even taking place so we need to tell that right so the first thing i'm going to go to add a before the transaction is committed i'm going to say transaction dot add to backstack so here i can pass a null or i can pass an entry so i'm going to add a string over here now we will see why i will do that but for now i'll say what we are trying to do with the single statement is that we are trying to recognize this transaction that is happening on our screen and we are trying to add it to our backstack. 
Now when the user presses the back button at this point after the transaction has been committed, this transaction object will be undone and the user will be presented with the previous screen which is which will be our main or you can say blank main activity in that case right now we're gonna do the same thing for everything that means here this one line provides knowledge to the Android operating system that some transaction is happening and probably you should consider saving the changes to the screen state over here so I'll take this statement over here well I'm sorry I can't put it in proper words well I'll say add B now this time we're saving the idea of a transaction B that is at B taking place over here right I'll repeat the whole series of steps everywhere before I commit the transaction so that will be remove B so at this point I have added the transaction dot add to backstack before calling commit on all the transactions in my case now that means our backstack is aware of all these changes that are taking place and we can roll back so now let us see what is the difference between the app earlier when it was going to the home screen directly after performing all the changes and now when we have added this one single statement that says that hey dude there is a transaction that is taking place please save the knowledge of this transactions happening in your back stack so let let us see how that works so now let us try to understand the scenario I have my emulator up and running I see add a I see remove a I see add B then I see replace with a remove a then I see add a again detach a attach a and so on and all those changes are being seen here on the left side of the screen now let us try and see what happens when I press the back button now if I say back button it goes one step back again back button goes one step back again back again back and that is working perfectly thanks to the statement add to backstack everywhere because every transaction is being is being saved inside our backstack by saying that hey this change was performed so next time user clicks back undo this change that's the kind of stuff that's happening over there so now this is a rough idea that shows you guys okay something is happening and something was being saved but here on the right side of the text view let me exactly show you what is there inside the backstack and what is what are the things that are happening as things change here on the left side of the screen so for that I'm gonna go ahead and implement an interface if you guys remember it's called implements fragment manager dot on backstack change listener now this interface is having a method I'm gonna say alt enter implement the methods click OK on backstack change every time the backstack gets changed this method is going to be called and here inside this method you can get notified of what are the changes in the backstack now let's see how we can use the text view if you guys remember on my linear layout there's a scroll view and there's a text view over here we are going to use this text view and try to see exactly what are the contents of our backstack so for main activity I'm gonna go about and then I'm gonna say text view text now I need to create it by saying text equals to find view by id r dot id dot message that was the id of that text view i had i'll enter perform the typecasting okay now here inside our own backstack change method what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna say i wanna append text all the time so i'm not gonna erase any text at all so i'm gonna say text dot get text plus just a blank empty new line and then I'll have another of those and then I'll say what I want to know is the number of entries inside my backstack I'm gonna use a for loop so I'm gonna say int count manager dot get backstack entry count now if there are four transactions that have been saved inside our backstack then the number of entries is gonna be four now remember the topmost entry is the most recent screen that the user sees right that means the oldest one which the user saw very earlier is always on the bottom so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a for loop over here by saying for I'm gonna loop in the reverse manner now why would I do this because I wanna print the topmost entry first remember the index starts with 0 1 if let's say the backstack has four elements 0 1 2 3 3 is the most recent one and 0 is the oldest one so I wanna print 3 first so I'm gonna say for int I equals to count minus one because count is the total number of entries it's like an array you see there are four elements you have to start with three from three to zero right so I'm gonna say count minus one I greater than equals to zero I'll say I minus minus and inside this I'm gonna have my text by saying text dot set text and again as I said I'm not gonna delete anything I'm gonna keep appending stuff so I'm gonna say text dot get text plus I'll get the entry that we have so that would be something like this I'm gonna say manager 
dot get backstack entry at i right and this is gonna give me a backstack entry object now remember at each position you don't have a simple fragment or you don't have a simple transaction being stored but what you have is a complex object called backstack entry entry over here this is the one which is being stored at each position in the backstack so now this what is this entry object containing let's find out we'll say entry dot as you guys notice it shows all the details about what is there so I'm gonna say get name over here and then I'm gonna have a space a new line maybe yep a new line and then at the end of this entire ordeal I'm gonna go down again and again put a new line so this essentially is a lot of formatting work that I'm doing over here this entry dot get name is gonna return that string which was set over here while adding the entry for each transaction so now let's see this in action so you guys can understand better but before that we need to do something other than this we need to go here and on on create and I'm gonna say manager dot set on oh add on backstack change listener this oh that is one of the things that we need to do so now things look pretty good so as changes happen here on the left side things are gonna be seen on the right side let's say at a it says the current status of the backstack at a so let me put a new line between these two statements so that this at a comes below over here so okay now when I say add a over here remember the topmost screen that is visible to the user is always on top of the backstack so at a is seen over here now as I say remove a notice here again the status of the backstack has changed this time remove a operation is at the top which is not being seen over here then I say add B as you notice again the backstack has changed and this is the reason why I put up a scroll view so that you guys can keep going down and looking at this different changes now take a look add B is at the top most in the backstack that means remove a is below and add a is below now let, let me show you if I press back button right now we are going to remove a you see that there was add B it was popped out now remove a is the topmost now I press back button again you notice fragment A has come over here and add A is seen on the backstack and this is how the backstack works in Android. So I hope you guys have understood this topic which is one of the most tricky ones that you don't find a resource for anywhere on developer.android.com or on YouTube so far. Now there are only two things that I want to show you. One being how this back button works, the other being how to pop a specific transaction off the back stack. So now let's see, go back to this back button code over here, which is this method public void back over here. I'm going to simply say manager and this is going to work just like a real back button. Every time it's going to pop the topmost item off the stack and it will keep decreasing. Here I'm going to make a very specific commitment. So I'm going to say manager dot pop back stack with two parameters. One is going to be the element that we saved over here so first we have to give the name of the operation or the entry that we want to remove from our back stack this, it says pop add b so if you guys remember where was add b oh well there it is so here i had given the name add b so i'm going to use that name and i'm going to pop that specific entry of the back stack over here and the other one i need to supply is an integer parameter which is going to be zero for now and i'm going to show you what happens if you put something other than zero so let's run this and again check out things work. So coming back to our emulator, let's again try some transactions. I'm going to say add A, remove A, add B, replace with A and stuff like that. So each time as you guys notice, the back stack keeps changing and as you notice, replace with A is the top most on the back stack right now. But now let me say back over here and that takes me one step back. Notice replace with A has been popped off from the top and add B is now the new top over here right again I press back it is just like pressing the programmatic back button which we have over here so now right now it says add A remove A Bing now let me see if it pops up a very specific transaction so I'm gonna first add B and then I'm gonna remove B so our back stack is gonna have this right it's gonna have add A remove A add B remove B so now when I say pop add B so let's go down and find out so as you notice at B is here the topmost entry has been removed because we have come directly to that specific screen now if you guys are confused about this a bit let me show you again so there's add B remove a add a right let's go and add some more transactions so I'm gonna say replace with a then I'm gonna say detach a then I'm gonna say attach a and that should pretty much be just a lot of transactions now so if you guys notice the back stack it is attach detach replace add B so now again when I say pop add B let's go down you notice that all those above screens have been discarded and we have directly come over here and add B becomes our topmost screen but however we can change one thing over here from 0 
to fragment manager dot pop backstack inclusive now this means that remove all the screens you guys notice when we say pop add b it kept add b over here but when we say inclusive it's also going to remove this and we are going to see the remove a screen so let's see how that works again control s run this all right so i'm going to say add a remove a add b remove b replace with a and all those stuff so a lot of transactions over there and then i have my stuff over here so as you guys notice now observe carefully if the replace with a is the topmost place there's remove b there's add b now when i say pop add b it is also going to wipe first scene second screen and it is also gonna wipe the add b screen out of here because we have used the flag inclusive which means remove myself too so i'm gonna say pop add b and this time if you go down take a look we are only left with remove a and add a so that is how the flag pop back stack inclusive works so i hope you guys have understood something and in fact everything about fragment back stack over here with this single small utility app that i made if you guys like what you saw please please subscribe to my channel comment let me know your thoughts and please support us by clicking our ads thank you very much in advance see you guys later have a nice day